Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. What should we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. Amen. Amen. So it's not, we know that it's not based upon um, one's own ability that's going to determine God's mercy. It's based on God's plan. Amen. It's based on what God has in store and what he has planned for that, for those people. Uh, and sometimes we can get, you can look at one person, man, why is God, I mean, that person, God, so long-suffering um, with that person over there. And this person was like, man, it, think, it, seems, they, it seems like the one's going crazy. God will show mercy to who he show mercy for, but it has nothing to do with, when, when the Bible says that God has no respect to person, it means that God has no respect to person. God will choose according to who his desire and his plan and what and his purpose. It's, it's not written in the Bible by accident that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to who? What? His purpose. He's going to work it according to his purpose because his purpose is just. His purpose, God's purpose is just. Just because we may not understand it or we don't think it should go that way doesn't make it not just. We think, well, I don't know how God can choose that person. I don't know why God would put that person in a situation. That's why you, you see, God's way, this is one thing y'all got to understand something. God's way of choosing people is so different than people's way of choosing people. Matter of fact, people's way of choosing people, half of us would not be chosen by people. People, people, people may choose you by how you look. People may choose you by how you, your credentials. They choose you by how you, they feel, by, by, by. They, they, but see, that's why, but God said earlier, he said, when, when you saw the sons of Saul, uh, when we saw the sons of Samuel, people would choose kings by many different reasons. And Samuel's sons looked like kings. But, and they, they wouldn't, one thing about Samuel's sons, they weren't no cowards. I mean, Jesse's son, I'm sorry, thank you. Jesse's sons, they were no cowards. They were not men. But that's not how God chooses. And that's why what I'm, I'm, my, my desire is so much that people, man, sometimes I sit back and I, and I watch and, you know, you, and you look and you look at people and you're like, man, they, they, people choose for so many different reasons. But, other, that's why the, but those in the kingdom should be led by the what? They should be, and see, I'm going to tell y'all what God is going to talk about tonight, and this right here, this is a huge thing in, 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 in religion, in men's religion, don't them, because we, people, they are not led by the, people are not led by the spirit, we are led by what we like, what we think should be, we led by credentials, we led by this, we're not led, and, but see, one thing you got to understand something, and, and especially when it comes to relationships, we have the, people choose by all these things in them. But God, it's interesting. Say, I'll give mercy to who I give. It's a messed up thing if you choose somebody God chooses not to give mercy to. That means you're going to have a rough ride in your life. The Bible says, man, look at the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart of a person. And I'm going to tell you, those who know this, when you get this, especially, I think, those who God choose, let me tell you why they are so grateful. Many who God choose are so grateful because they knew they had no credentials. They knew they had no qualities for really for God to choose. They, they knew it was nothing in them that really, that God, and, 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 and people in life would never, uh, 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 would never have chosen them for those positions or to have that sort of, they would have never picked that person. It was so funny. Just to tell you a quick story. There's a young lady. She went on an interview. She was a young lady. She interviewed. And she got a job. And I was talking to her today. And the guy, the manager, 
who was supposed to interview her, the manager who was supposed to interview her, got real busy. He became busy. Um, and when he became real busy, because I don't know, but God kind of got him real busy to the place where the, 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 the head man called her in and interviewed her. And he liked her so much, he hired her on the spot. But the young lady began to observe the manager she was working for. And she saw certain characteristics in the manager she worked for and realized that the characteristics that she saw in that manager, that he would have never hired her. So what did God do? Bypassed him to get... See, God will bypass people in situations to get you in certain situations because... because People, there are people who would have never hired you because they can't see, because they can't see past what they credential, what they think, what they think, or what they feel qualifications are. They can't see, and and God has to get you in when it's about His purpose. God has to get you in certain situations because y'all got to understand something. No matter what it is in this world, Donald, even, to, even from the president, it's always, it's always about God's purpose. It's never about you. It's always about God's purpose. But it's too many Christians who don't look to serve God's purpose and look to serve their own, even in churches. You might hire the most, you may look to hire the most qualified singer and God be like, I don't want that person singing for me. That's why I'm saying this to you as disciples and leader and people that do a leader. You got to be very, you got to be so in sync with God that you care about what God wants, not what you want. I'm, I'm serious because you think, man, you know, this person, you got to, you got to, you know, Jesus could have chosen, God could have chose anybody. Why would he go choose Gillian? Gillian. It's get hot. People, I'm going to tell you something. People can't see, if they're not walking in the spirit, they can't see your heart. I was oh, this thing in my spirit to go, to just go here. Look. People, they choosing husbands and wives. They choosing people, and, and, uh, they, they choosing all types of people based on they can't see the heart God sees the heart that's why God be like God be telling us especially my, he said, watch what you come in covenant with you don't know the heart this person my, man, they may be able to sing everybody in that room under, they may be able to sing everybody in that room under the table. And they, they are so pre precise about their singing. They, they, they are so, I mean, when you look at them, they're like so tedious. I mean, so, like you would think they have a spirit of excellence because they're so like detailed about their singing. But it's only one problem. They love singing more than they love God. Y'all better, we better hear this because people, I'm telling you, I'm I sit back, I, I, I get to observe so much, and I, 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 I be like, and I pray, I be on my, I be like praying because you see it, you just see me like God, God help us because people, I'm talking about in relation, I see a lot even in relation, we so blind. See, but this is what makes us blind. When it's yours, you will choose and you will move according. When you make it yours, you will choose according to what you think makes it great. But when it belongs to God, you will wait and let him choose because you want, because why? Because your desire when you serve God is to please him. Anyone who serves God desire always is to please him. If you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, oh, I feel it's in my spirit, I don't know. The Holy Ghost desire is not to please you. The Holy Spirit desire is to please God. How do I know? The Bible says that Jesus always did those things that please. So if 
the Holy Spirit is to bring all things into remembrance of Jesus Christ, then it's leading you to always want to please. I'm going to mess y'all up. What? Satan is a huge deceiver. He will manipulate you based on what he know you like. Y'all better hear? That's why the children of God must be so in sync with God that they care about what God like because God sees deeper. God can see deeper. Come on. If you read your Bible, Saul was no chump. If you read Saul, that brother's statue and his built and the way he looked, the people didn't they Saul, he looked like a king. God says, next time I choose, I, I, I have to believe that. That Jesse, Jesse, right? I want to mention. Sons must have looked like Saul. Sometimes we go choosing. We are choose. Some of us, your battle in my battle, some of our battles is you're choosing. See, Saul was not chosen by God, though released by God. He was not chosen by God, but he was released by God. He gave them what they wanted. That's what the people see. Your ide your ideal, your ideal, your, your thought pattern in which you had in the world is that it's a soul. Well, even what you may have thought, what well, this is gonna make successful, this is gonna be successful, this one's gonna make work. It's made out of soul. Wait, wait. I can't no, I got a prop. Saul. The structure, the world system, they are good at things. But you got to understand something. The things that the world are good in, their hearts tainted. Y'all ain't hearing. So that's why Saul is what they met. Saul is what he gave them from their image from the world. And Samuel, the prophet, had a little Saul in him too. Because God had to tell Samuel, forget about Saul. Stop, stop tripping about Saul. And when Samuel went looking for a king, he went looking for Saul. Y'all with me? Because sometimes we can go looking for a man and start looking for Saul. What is Saul for? What is Saul when it comes to a man? Your same worldly credentials you had when the same thing you were looking for in the world in a man that you thought was gonna make you feel valuable and precious. Let God shift it. I hear y'all talking. Let I feel in the spirit. Let God shift it. He shifted for somebody. The same person that you were looking for in the world, you get saved and start looking for them same type of people. Not realizing. That when God called you, it was nothing in you that God was looking for. You, you, you ain't hear what I just said. When God called you, see, when you realize your calling, your expectations of others have to be lined up with God. Because why? Because when you realize your calling, if you realize that in your calling, there was nothing that God saw delightful in you. In other words, according to the word of God, you didn't move God. His mercy wasn't moved because you were educated. His mercy wasn't moved because you are a hard worker. His mercy was moved because of his purpose. So therefore, as a pastor, I, 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 it's a hard lesson. Everybody say hard lesson. Come on. Y'all know it's a hard. Come on. Y'all, see, some of y'all in this room don't believe that you bad on with this. You're dealing with this. Yes, you are. Even I was dealing with it. Because I always tell people, I would have 
never chose Pastor Bobby as not because he not, I know he a mighty man of God. I know the brother does no word. Got the brother got word coming out his pores, and he's stern. But because he's so militant in the word, because to work with kids would have been like <laughs> I just can't see that. But my soul, because I come from a sheriff's department mentality my soul mentality i couldn't see him being tender like that y'all ain't yeah i couldn't see the qualities in him that would god that god can see that could work god's purpose but i'm so glad so, say, 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 say i'm so glad that i'll get out of god's way See, some of us got husbands and wives and friends connected to you that you would have never because you couldn't see you couldn't see the tender you could see you're like I, I, you know sir because you know some lady can can we just go with the ladies just for a minute see some of you ladies you like man you like a thug you like i like the brother gotta be a little rough edge i got he got a little tatted up or something you know what i'm saying he gotta have a little roughness to him you know what i'm saying so uh, I, I, so you that was your soul so when you come into the kingdom and you meet a brother like hello how are you god i know that ain't him because that that brother look like if a fly, if a, if a bubble, if a fly come, he's going to be like. <laughs> but what you don't understand, y'all, <laughs> they tripping. Don't you? I got to let God do God tonight. What they don't understand is that the brother God chose. You thought that brother you thought was hard. That wasn't hard. The brother God chose when things get rough financially, when things get rough physically, he know how to stand and love you no matter what. Amen. 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 See, God trying, God's desiring to shift some people tonight. Because let me tell you when God, let me tell you why God, I hear this word in my spirit. Because some of us, you, 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 you got to check how you making decisions. You got to check what you doing because are you seeking God or are you look what are you looking at in what you're doing what qualifications what are you looking for because you God saying some of us in this room you I need the option you because I want you to go a little deeper because you're you're starting to draw close to things you're starting to hook up with things that they look like you but they I, I see in their heart they don't look like me They don't look like me. They don't. They don't look like me. They don't look like me. God said they don't look. They don't look like him. God don't care about their credentials. They don't look like him. And when they don't look like him, they will misuse or abuse or mishandle his purpose you don't believe me that's what Saul did at the end he misused and abused and mishandled he started want watch this watch this jacket this this good Saul was called to be a king of Egypt I mean Israel right Israel was supposed to destroy his enemies Saul liked becoming friends with the enemies. Saul had a spirit where he liked to like please the enemies. He liked to, he had a compromising spirit where he was like down with the thing he was called to destroy. He was like, let's associate with it a little bit. Let's not destroy it. Let's kind of like water it down. And God said, but that's not your, that's not what I designed you for. That's not what I've got Israel for. I didn't, see, you got to know what God is designing you for. To, because you understand, because see, you, what God is designing you for, I can't, I, I don't want nobody socializing or trying to be friends with something that God designed for me to destroy. I don't have, even, even my, see, I was designed, I know what I was designed, see, I was designed from, from holish to holy, I was designed to do everything I'm doing, I can't be 
praying. We can't even. I, I remember times they wanna. When I remember in my early in my job when I was a family, they like, man, let's sit at the table with them. I can't be friends with you. No, I can't compliment. I can't why? Cause yo, me and you don't. We don't. No, no, no. I'm here to destroy what you're trying to play with. I'm here to. I'm here to kill what you're trying to play with. I'm here to cut off the neck what you're trying to associate. I'm here to show a difference. You gotta understand because you gotta because see God designed you for a battle if you his purpose he designed you for a purpose and you can't come into covenant with anything that's an opposite of that that likes or, or want to be gentle with what he's designed you to destroy God has called you to destroy the anointing does what destroy the yoke Saul didn't want to destroy the yoke he's sitting there with the king they rolling Samuel came in there and said I hear sheep. I hear, I hear, I hear, but I, I, I hear the enemy in the camp. I hear what God sent you to destroy in the camp. Go get the king. Samuel said, hold up. And ran through him right in front of, right in front of him. Samuel said, I care about obeying God. He's sitting there trying to find favor with a king. And I said, no, run him through. Because what does darkness have to do with light unless it's there to reprove it? This is what I'm trying to tell you. Jesus is coming back. You better understand where you at. Because we're in the season now. Choose what side you're going to be on. There will be no lukewarm. He's going to spit you out his mouth. I tell him, I say, just to say this and then we're gonna get started. I was like, man, I was listening to a young lady. You know, because my thing is relationships. That's what God, that's what I've been pulled in, bedded for. That's what God, that's what I, it's in my core. I, I realize even when I'm talking to so I said, this, I'm listening to a talk show of a lady. They talking. I'm listening to what they're saying. My spirit getting so vexed. And they, and they sound so good what they're saying. It sounds good to the flesh and one young lady in the talk show talking about well you know God said he'll give you free will and you can just choose who you want you know if you want to be with the boyfriend and your, if it's your boyfriend or you, we ain't embracing no we ain't gonna embrace no boyfriend girlfriend in no form or fashion not at all God ain't ordained it on no flip God hate it he can't stand it don't ever try to tap into it. Don't ever say nothing kind about it. Kill it. Why? Because God ain't embracing it. She said, God says, don't, don't, don't call her. Don't put it on the show. Call her. I called her. I got it. Man, she started, I was like, you know what? Because there was something about it. She had humility. Because she asked a question. She said, I don't believe that God, this is what she said, I don't believe that God will give you anything that you're not ready for. Y'all do know that's a lie, right? Wait a minute. Y'all look at me like, you do know absolutely there is nobody God called that they were ready for it. You gotta be careful. God's whole thing is to put you in a position where you just need him. Look, they look at me like I'm crazy. Show me who God called who was ready for it. God, uh, <laughs> he, and I had, this is what God told me to tell her. He said, evaluate the relationships you had that you thought you were ready for. <laughs> he said, how did that work out? The ones that you thought you were ready for, how did it work out? Because when we think we're ready for something, usually we think we're ready because it's benefiting our flesh some way. There's nobody God. Even Jesus in the flesh wasn't ready for the cross. Apostle, wait a minute, watch what you're saying. Be careful what you're saying. I ain't saying this in the Bible. When Jesus got ready to go on the cross in the garden, the Bible said he the one said, he in that flesh. Now I'm not talking about the spirit, I'm talking about the flesh. In the flesh. In that flesh, he said, Lord. Not my will. He said, Lord, he knew what time it was because he'd been saying it all the time his own walk. 
but then he started questioning in the wheel his flesh started questioning Lord not because the flesh don't never want to die that's your will and desire look at your point your finger hope just act like you got a mirror say watch out for your own will and your own desires watch this I'm gonna mess y'all up they still there they though God is there they still there come on I'm, I could be transparent they peek up every once in a while like I had if you have a desire to like to be known if you had a desire it'll peek up every once in a while if you had a desire for people to call your name it'll peek up that's why you gotta be that's why you gotta stay in the light so when it pick up bam bam come on oh y'all they acting like I'm on what I'm talking about if your desire was you like six foot two because you, even though you marry five foot nine every once in a while six foot two but yeah, bam you gotta kill it down am I lying that's your battle with the flesh your battle with the flesh is only your desires your old desires If you like, like when I was in the world, if you like five foot four pecan tan, and you get five foot two dark chocolate, when things get rough, here come pecan tan. So you know you should have chose me. And you gotta like, you know you should have chose. Ch tell that lie to shut up. I got exactly what God wanted me to have. Y'all with me? I, I want you to see this because you think I'm, I'm going off track, but I'm not. I'm trying. He's going to be talking. And what we're about to read, he's going to be talking about Israel. And he's going to be talking about the Gentiles. He's going to be talking about the promise. And he wanted us to know as we get it going here. Come on, home, boy. You come on in. God, gonna get, God is in. What is he, Romans 9 really about? Just letting you know. Don't get it twisted. I'm the one in control here. I run this. I run this from the head to the toe. I choose. I develop. But watch this. But this is the good part. The one that run it is absolutely in love with you. But he chose you to work for his purpose. He There's something about, I don't know if he could try. He, it must be something about your heart that he knew that even though we trip, say trip, you, 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 trip all be, be, be bugging. Y'all know we do. Trip all be bugging. Y'all know we do. But he knew that if he showed you tripping and bugging, you're going to be on your face to my crying. You're going to be like, God, I don't want to miss you. He knew that you would drop. Instead of you just saying, forget it, I'm going to do what I want. He knew that your heart would be like David. David wasn't perfect, but David had a heart. When he missed God, he was like, man, God. It wasn't a light thing for David. Though David did not condemn himself, he knew you wouldn't condemn yourself, but you would have a godly sorrow. He knew that you would have a, what's a godly sorrow? A godly sorrow is that you're, you're, you're sorrow that you hurt God, but you know God ain't forgetting you. Amen? A godly sorrow is, I'm sorry that I did something against God, but I know I'm so well enough to know that I'm not dismissed. Why do I know I'm not dismissed? Because I wasn't really qualified in the first place. And when, just to go back to what I was saying, when I spoke to her, her heart was so, she was like, I get it. Because I can't have her, come on, I'm a, I'm a slayer. I can't have, I know she's a woman of God, but I can't have her on, 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 on with all the people watching her. And she's under God's name and saying something that's going to cause people to stumble. No. No. But I'm not, but I'm also wise enough to know that I'm not going to put her on blast on, on Facebook so we can get in a dispute. That, come on. That's not what the word says. So I went to her privately and talked to her with love. And at the end, she was asking me, Will you come on the show? I was like, No, that's not why I called. See, y'all think I, I said, No, that's not why I called. I called because, and she said, I, I, I said, I called because God put up my heart. He impressed, because He showed me. He said, She is humble. She just don't know. See, some people are humble, they just don't know. And there are things that God is specializing you in that you know. 
Amen. Y'all, y'all get it? We get it? We do. Because I'm going to tell you something. Not people. Let me tell you something. Not people. Everybody say, not people. But things that are contrary to the word of God, the kingdom is about to fight for it. The kingdom will not compromise, stand down, or laugh and giggle with you when you are speaking in a way that destroys people's lives. But the kingdom, what does light have to do with darkness? Is there to reprove, to expose. But what keeps us in a place where we're so kind and loving? Because to tell the truth, everybody sitting in this room right now, including me, you were exposed by some light. And that light, that light was gentle, kind, it was sweet, but it was truthful. Can I get an amen? It was truthful. When God looked at me, it was truthful. That's why he gave me the title of the book. He didn't give me the title. People, when I tell people something to the title, but they be looking like, you know, I, I, never, I never forget the first time I told a woman, I was at my job, and I told, it was years ago, years ago, I, I, um, I was at, we was a long time ago, Miss Mike Miller. I was there, and I told somebody, this is the title of my book. They was like, oh, no. They looked at me like, why would, now this was boys back, we was way back, that's a long, it was like, why would you call it a whole the holy? See, we don't like the ugly, but until you see the ugly, you can't really value the beauty. So we don't like when the female says she been, she done done this and she done took pictures and she done, we don't like the ugly, but how can you truly see the beauty if they can't testify about the ugly? That's where God come, that's where God got me, that's where God came and got me from, the ugly. It was the ugly that let me know I was never qualified. That's why don't start getting beautiful and start thinking you qualified. Stay humble and thank God that he brought you from the ugly to the to the beauty. Amen. I don't know who I, I needed to hear. Somebody needed to hear what God. This shift is somebody need to hear what God is saying. Because I know in this year what God is saying, I want you to go forth and reveal my glory. That glory is that glory, it's gonna make people mad. See, the church don't want to make people mad no more. Because it's so connected with the world, it don't want to get nobody upset. But if you read Jesus, he got a lot of people upset. Even those who were following him. Because he would just say something that he would be doing so good, wouldn't he? And then he'd just say something so like, drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. He'll say that right in the midst of a party. What do you mean a party? They, he would, come on. He'd be like, come on, Jesus. He got, watch it. They just coming back from casting down demons and everything. He, he, he like, look at Lord, you have bestowed. He, he happy. God, you have revealed this not to the wise, but to the, the babe. He rejoicing with them, and they like, yeah, we with you. Then he say, drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. Just mess them up. And then the kids like, huh? They were, I can see them like, huh? Come on, man. We just got, we partying. We done cast our demons. We rolling with you, Lord. He do that. He do that today. When you think you rolling, he be like, let me show you how ugly you are in a certain area. Let me show you that you're not what you think you are. But he's not doing it for your demise. He's doing it because his process is always to take you from glory to glory to glory. And we do the same thing. People do the same thing today that they did back then. They have two choices. They say, where am I going to go, Lord? For in you are the words that lead to eternal life. Or they do the second. And some people do the second and they still go to church. They still do the church, but in their heart they did the second. What's the second? The Bible says they walked away from him. And they, they, the Bible said they turned and walked away said it's a hard thing turn and walk away and walk with him no longer that day 
You could be in the church and not walking with him no longer. You could be right in here and no longer walking. You're now walking with in your agenda because you didn't like his. It's the truth. It's the truth. So I know when he say, when he's telling us, go forth and reveal my glory. I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm going to tell you some man, I'm always oh, about to get God of old oh, man. I'm t- I see it because I'm first partaker. He about to cut up, uproot, tear down, build. He about to go deep. And some of us, somebody had a dream. <laughs> somebody came in with a dream and said in the dream, they said, Apostle, this is what a purge looked like. And they said it was empty. And people were being led away by their flesh, left and right. And they said, me and they said me and Elder Chris were standing at the back door looking for somebody to come to the classroom. What <laughs> nobody come to the classroom no more. Listen. Listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He said, reveal my glory. When we do a study on revealing his glory, y'all better, you know what Jesus would say things like that? When Jesus got ready, he said, the hour has now come that the Son of God, that, that you be glorified. You know, when he said, when he, talk, when he talked more about glory than any other time, is when he was getting ready to die. So if God is asking a church to go forth and reveal his glory, Guess what he's saying? That little bit of you that was left, that little part of you where you thought I, I let I let you roll a couple of years and you was down with it, apostle. Give it up. How do we know that's true? Because the word says Christ in me is the hope of glory. No longer I live. But Christ lived. And the life that I now live, I live in faith. Because in the kingdom, God ain't let no leaven in the kingdom. And he's going to raise his sons and daughters who hate leaven. Why? So people can see what purity looked like for real. Amen. So it's a good, I'm talking about rejoice. Rejoice. I am. Because, man, I, I ain't been having nothing but, oh, man, my wife woke me up. Let's talk about, what you fighting? <laughs> I guess she woke me up because I was about to elbow her, too. I'm in a straight out battle in the spiritual realm. Because the enemy know, oh, we're in the classroom, but we're about to go take some territory. Oh, yeah. It's going to be light sparking up all over Dade, Broward County, all over West Point. We're about to take some territory. Mine might be relationship. Yours might be some. It's going to be all about souls, whatever arena he's sitting you in to show people what Jesus really looked like. What did Jesus really look like? Because God brought me back to my memory and said, you know what? And I've been asking people, I've been asking people, I've been asking people yesterday, I asked them from seven to that seven thing. He said, ask the people. I, and I asked somebody who wasn't saying, the answers are funny. I asked people who were saying, they were saying, when have you ever truly seen a godly relationship? People are like, no. Not really. And they used to see that some of their faces be like, I ain't never really thought about that. But I most, let me tell you the most answers I got. No. So I had a lot like, okay, God. No. 
in the most important thing that God would reveal himself in and matter. And yet, people are saying, even in church, they ain't seen one that looked like God. That don't make anybody scared in this room. That don't make anybody realize how far, far we are. That the church is saying, we have not seen a godly relationship. But yet, God uses marriages to show himself. I said, okay. I said, all right. Time to strap on. Because we producing them. But it's time for people to see them. I'm not talking about godly with just a man and woman. I'm talking about godly with sisters, godly with brothers, godly on how we treat one another. We cannot treat one another like the world treat each other and say that we are walking in the word. For how will they know that you are my disciples? In the way that you what? I know you are disciplined in the word and your ability to love your brothers and sisters. And that means you can tell the truth to them. Amen. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Good evening. Um, I wanted to elaborate on verse 13. It says, As it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Um, when we read that last week, I had went home and I was like really thinking about it. Like, you know, God, how come it says that you hate one person, but you love the other person? You know, I thought you was a loving God. Why would you um, say in your word that you hate people, that you hate someone? And when you look up um, that scripture in the Hebrew text, you know, we have the American um, translation, but in the Hebrew version, when it says that, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. In Hebrew language, that's really like a hyperbole. A hyperbole is a form of exaggeration. And so that's not to be taken literal, that God hates Esau and that he loves Jacob. It's a hyperbole. It's in a form of exaggeration. And in the Hebrew, what that really means is that I have preferred one over the other. And the reason why God will prefer one over the other is because of a purpose that he's trying to carry out. When you think of scripture, um, where you see love and hate in the same place, let's look in the gospel where it says, you know, um, one cannot love God and money at the same time. One must hate one and love the other. So God is saying you must prefer one over the other. You have to either prefer God or prefer money. You know, he's not saying to hate money because money is not evil. The Bible says that it's the greed or the lust of money that's the root of all evil. But money itself is just paper. It's, it's not something that you should hate. And then also in the scripture where there's like a hate-love correlation is when Jesus says, if any man wills to be my disciple, um, but he does not hate his mother and his father and his sisters and brothers and his wife and husband, then he cannot follow me. And we know that God doesn't literally want us to hate our mom and our dad in order to be Christians and followers of him. But what he's saying in that verse is that you must prefer one over the other. You can't be a disciple of Christ, but then, you know, prefer your parents over me. Because if I tell you to do something, you're going to obey man and not obey me. So you have to prefer one over the other. So in that scripture, it says, you know, Jacob, I have preferred over um, Esau because of a purpose that he has, um, that he wants to carry out. And when you think of like people in the Bible that God had preferred over others, like you can see that he chose them for a reason. Like Apostle said, not that they were perfect, but because of a purpose that he wants to fulfill with them. So as I was just sitting up here meditating, like he gave me like a few people who he preferred over others, such as Moses. And um, even going back before that, Abraham, you know, Abraham was a Hebrew, 
and God called him out of a people to make him a new people for a purpose. Um, and with Abraham, he became the father of faith. And the Bible says that through you, nations shall be blessed. You know, so when you have faith like Abraham did, then you become a son of God like Abraham was. And so you see that God used Abraham. And by using Abraham, we are all like children of Abraham. And um, so it wasn't just about Abraham being called out and singled out for himself. It was for everybody. And then you think of Moses. You know, Moses was in um, Egypt, and out of all the Hebrew Israelites that were there, um, God chose Moses. But though he preferred Moses, oh, he could have chose any Hebrew to lead Israel out, but he chose Moses for whatever reason, he chose Moses. But in him choosing Moses, Moses went back to Egypt to rescue all of Israel out and to take them to the promised land. And then you think of like Esther, um, when the king, so King A, um, as, I forgot how to pronounce his name, but um, yeah, when the king, um, when Vasti, you know, disobeyed him, whatever, and he wanted a new queen, he lined all the virgins up. And out of all the virgins, you know, Esther, I have loved, the others I have hated. I preferred her over them. But in God preferring her and choosing to use her, it wasn't just to blow her up to make her great, but she sacrificed herself to go before the king so that she can save all of Israel. You think of David, you know, out of all of Jesse's sons, you know, um, God chose David. But in choosing David, it wasn't to puff him up. David led all of Israel into a victory for the Philistines, and he united the kingdom after Saul had it destroyed from his disobedience. And you think of Joseph, you know, Joseph, the son of Jacob. Jacob had 12 children, and of all of his 12 sons, you know, God gave Joseph a dream that he was um, the son and all the other stars were bound down to him. Out of all of the children, Joseph I have loved and the other 11 I have hated. I prefer one over the other. But even in God choosing Joseph, it wasn't, again, to blow him up. Joseph came out of the land that he was at. He was sold into slavery. He was taken um, into Egypt. And when there was a famine in the land where his parents and his brothers were, God used him as second in command in Egypt to have that power and authority to bring his family to a place of famine, to a place where there was abundance. You know, he says, you know, what you did against me, you know, you may have thought it was for evil, but it was for good, for the saving of many souls. It was for a purpose why God chose me. And then even Israel, you know, in the book of Deuteronomy, I believe, God says to Israel, I have chosen you, not because you're more in number than the other nations, because you're really not. And not because you're more righteous than any other nation. Because the Bible, in fact, says that Israel committed more holotry and idolatry than any other nation. You know, God saved them. They have the Ten Commandments. They have the Torah. God is with them physically. And they're still falling to abomination after abomination as we're reading during Bible study in the book of Chronicles. So it wasn't because of something that they've done, but because of a purpose. He chose Israel. But in God choosing Israel, it was to be the light to all the surrounding nations to show forth the glory of God for a purpose. And so I just wanted to like really point that out, um, that it doesn't really mean that God hates. It just means that he preferred one over the other for a purpose, to save other people. Amen. Come on now. Come on. Amen. Done backwards. That means God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that means God chose you. And sometimes we can say, well, why didn't he choose my mom? My mom's not saved. Why could my mom or dad get saved? How come I'm the first one to get saved? Or why didn't he choose this? And this is, I love, I love how Devon broke that down. Because watch this. If you notice Every person that Davon chose, every person that Davon used as an example that God chose over other people were to fulfill God's purpose. And what, what I want to show you today, this is the deceit today. I want you to see the deceit. The deceit today is that God chooses you now to fulfill your own purpose. Oh my God, that's deceit. And it's so many people deceived. He now chooses you 
to fulfill your own. When he got so, when he's, when in the word he's saying that the harvest is great, but the labors are few, but yet how God has lost so many people. And even if we go back to some of the ones that Davon spoke on, when some of them went left, they went left because they went trying to fulfill their own purpose. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard today to, to, to really get people to see what God is saying right now. Because remember what God told them? Because the gospel today is mixed with this selfie type of, it's me, 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 me. But see, the people, and yet, let me show you what, how, how you know what I'm saying is true. It's such a me, 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 me that the children that God would try to save in North Miami or the children that God would try to save in, 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 in Opalaka or the children God would try to save in our neighborhoods or the children God would try to save in, 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 in Overtown, they are being lost because the false doctrine has people believing that God saved you for you to fulfill your purpose. And now we write books on how you can be the greatest you. When the reality that the first thing that in the, in the scriptures he tells you that you must be willing to lose your life. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Everything in the Bible says that God is still the same. Even to the place where he says a seed must fall to the ground according to, and to die or abide alone. Saying that you must go through the transition that you will not abide alone. But yet the desire, and this is what I say to people. And I'm saying, please hear God say what he's saying today. We have confused God's purpose with the American dream. We have confused God's purpose with the American dream. And Satan has done a great job, yeah he has, in masquerading that God, that because remember now, Satan's whole desire is to be, remember this, Satan's whole desire is to please your purpose. His desire is to, so many people who are being blessed are not being blessed by God, they're actually being deceived by Satan. Because it's, watch this, at the end, you feel good about you getting everything you want. And ain't nobody being transformed in your life. Ain't nobody else you care about. Nobody else around you. It's just about you, your family, what you're doing. And you have no heart for the, see one thing, you and I cannot have the Holy Ghost and not have a heart for the lost. It's impossible. But see, one cause is for self-sacrifice. Present your body as a living. Causes for self-sacrifice. Let your mind no longer be conformed to this world. But be trained. Desiring to do the will of God. The other one, sacrifice people. Is sacrifice people for self-will. It looks how you're going to benefit me. How can you benefit me? But God looks on how he can benefit you. He looked past. I'm not going to give you anything that ain't going to line up with scripture. He looked past your faults and saw what you needed. We got to make sure. Look at somebody say, don't get deceived. Thinking you serving God and you're really serving yourself. But how many know he's a good father, amen? And his desire is that you prosper in health as your soul prosper. But we prosper when we are in compliance. And God wants us to think, that's what God wants us to believe. He wants us to believe prospering, our true prospering is the reward in heaven. He wants your whole motivation to be that your true pro. Because watch this. The apostles would have never gave, you would never give your life 
if you didn't perceive that the prosperity that you were going to receive was greater than earthly rewards. But in this new gospel, we think prospering is stuff. But Jesus turned around and said, what is a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Because I came for the soul. Amen? So, my desire, probably Barbara's desire, Pastor Barbara's desire, our desire is that you prosper in health, that your soul prosper. How do our soul prosper? That the word of God dwell richly in us. It dwells so much richly in you that you are so strong that when a storm, you don't eat when a storm comes. You don't eat already to stand through the storm. Amen? How many of y'all want a nurse? How many of y'all want a nurse? How many of y'all want a doctor? Come here, Paul. Come here, come here, come here. How many of us, how many of us, you want a doctor operating on your brain doing this? Hold up. Anybody want somebody like that? Because it's, because while he reading, he, 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 you know that don't slow him down. And your, your brain is open to the elements while he's sitting there trying to figure out which one of these nerves that he's supposed to be um, trying to but what you want is oh this thing good what you want sit down you want somebody studying to show themselves approved that when it's time for them to do surgery they done studied and they done exercised so good they ain't crying through the storm because why? They rooted in, they rooted in, in faith. Amen. Because I, I, light is full of trouble and I got to be able, see I can't, I can't, let me just tell you, let me tell you, I'm just testify what God do. I can't, I told y'all my wife, she's no longer working. That's 40, that's gone. I, I don't have time to be crying. I don't have time the, the, the savings that's right the thing I, I don't have time all I, what do I have time to do to do what God has me doing and I have to tell God because I have the faith to know yeah you got to take care of this I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna lose one hour of sleep I'm not gonna not, not gonna lose one hour of reading my Bible because I've been studying for years to know that he know what I need before I even ask him. I've been studying. I've been tried by the fire to understand that I've been in a job. I've been in a situation where I couldn't get paid. I done seen situations drop up and seen God. Not man, but seen God fill it back up again. I have seen God move in, in ways. So therefore, I look at a storm and say, be still. Storm, be, 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 storm, be still. I'm not boasting in myself, but I'm both. So don't get, no, I feel in the spirit. Don't look at me. I'm boasting in the Lord. I'm just sure about him. And God wants you to be sure about him. God said it last time. Stop testifying when you see it. Open up your mouth when you believe it. Why? Because then it becomes a testimony to somebody else. He said it on Sunday. Tell everybody what God doing. Tell everybody what God has said to you. Because the bottom line is, if you believe it, then declare it and decree it that the unsaved will see it when it comes to pass that your God is God. See, jo Jacob, was it Jacob? No, no, no wait a minute. Hold on. Joseph. Joseph said, I saw y'all bowing down to me. They got mad and got angry. He was just telling them the truth. I saw y'all, even the, I saw the chief. Father, I saw you even coming. Oh, wait a minute. You're getting beside yourself, Jacob. Nah. I mean, Joseph, you're getting beside yourself. No, he wasn't. But when it happened, he wasn't getting the glory. Your God is God. See, when you can't testify until you see some evidence, blessed is the one who has not seen. Your faith is not growing. You got to say what God said for people to see the glory. Go forth and reveal. You got to say that you saved and sanctified and filled with hope. You got to tell people what you stand for. You got to tell people what you believe in. You got to tell people what you're standing for. You got to tell people who saved you and delivered you. You got to open up your mouth and declare and decree and pronounce what God has said. Why? So when 
they try you, they see your God. He said God was for him. He said God was not going to have him move. And look what God has done. God says, you know what we are? These old silent Christians. Scared of failure. Scared of failure with a God who cannot fail. Love bears all, believes all, hopes all, endures all. Love can't fail. He said, I'll never leave you to be ashamed. People get mad at Papa Papa because he be declaring for you. Declare it. If God said it, declare it. If you don't believe it, and then when it happened, it's going to happen, but then when it happened, oh, I knew God was going to do it. I knew God was going to do Do what? Do this. Girl, I ain't even never hear you even say nothing about it. Now you acting like you and God was down all along. You just as surprised as I am. Hear me. Hear what I'm saying. I'm using God. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. God says, those who are going forth to reveal my glory, oh, I know God coming. Oh, I know he coming. Oh, I know that sky. You don't even hear him talk about it no more. Christians don't even talk about it no more. Oh, I know that sky going to split open. Oh, I know he going to return. I'm going to be caught up with him. No, no, we're talking about that 40 acres in a mule. I know he coming. I know Jesus coming. I, I can't tell you the exact time, but I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting packed in the spiritual realm. Come on, y'all. I'm packing in the spiritual realm. I'm, I'm getting ready. This is, you know, people look at you mad when you're like, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. This good. This good. They get mad when like, we're like, this ain't my home. This ain't my home. I'm a pilgrim here. I'm only here temporary. This is not my home. Excuse me? Are you an alien? Yeah. Yeah. Now, nah. how many know when you start declaring the Korean things, people like, they want to talk to you. That's why he said, be ready to give my answer. Oh, I know my daughter. And give me a high five. You give me a high five. I know your daughter going to be saved, sanctified. Oh, she will be virtuous. She won't go through what I go. I'm declaring in the Korean and right now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to say it so much in my house that she going to be, her body going to be intact. Her mind going to be sharp. I'm declaring it as a baby in the atmosphere so bold. No, you can't say she won't have sex. Oh, yes, she, yes, I can. She won't lay with nobody till her husband comes. My son will walk with wisdom. He will walk with knowledge. He will serve God. I'm not going to wait till he get in trouble and turn away. I'm going to say it now. He going to serve God with all his heart, soul, and mind. I declare it. And that's all he going to hear. Boy, you know how precious you are. You are a mighty man of God. Open up your mouth. Reveal God's glory. It wasn't me. Didn't the word say try me? You said, you know, God got some slang. Try me. You know what I'm saying? God, try me. And see. Open up your mouth. Say what God tell you to say. I know how it is. Cause you be like, come the thoughts. What if he don't do it? <laughs> what if he do it late? What are you like? I don't know. God, God told me he gonna heal me. Man, they bringing in a specialist. <laughs> they telling me I'm gonna die too. <laughs> but God, you told me you gonna heal me. God, you said you gonna heal me. You said it. Call him on his way. God, we don't even talk to him. I, I talk to him. Shoot. I'd be like, God, hold up. You told me it was, I, honestly, when it came to even my, that house that I'm living right now, we, my wife was like, you know, women, uh, uh, no. they like house shopping. Man, 
and I'm missing, sir. I'm like, my wife's about, let's go. So I set up an appointment. Come on. I'm like, you know, I can't tell her. Okay, man. I'm getting in the house. I can't. I said, God, I can't do this no more. I love my baby. Give her what she want. Show us where it's at. Because I got, I, this, this is interfering with me. I know he can do it. And anything, I know my assignment. My job, my wife. These are my, I know these assignments sent by God. So I'm going to be bold in what I know God has done. Just like I know I'm not getting no divorce. And to death do us part, to one of us go home. Why? God arranged it. And I'm not going to be in no mediocre marriage either. It's going to be glorious. Why? Because that what God does. He does well. I'm going to declare it. Go forth and reveal my glory. Go forth. What is he telling us to do? Go forth and let the people know Jesus coming. They talking about, they talking about how he about to raise up a remedy right now. They talking about houses and cars and stuff. That's all good. But he said, my people, I want you to go forth and tell them, Jesus coming. When they ask you, why you talk so much about Christ? What you mean? Girl, he coming. He told you, yeah. <laughs> he told me he coming. He gonna come like a thief in the night. So that's why. Start preaching from that. Start preaching from the word. He go, oh, why, why are you ministering to me? Why are you talking to me? Because Jesus coming. He coming. Yeah, he coming. And let me tell you why I'm talking to you. Because he said he gonna come like a thief in the night. And I love you so much. I don't, could you imagine ministering to somebody like that? Because I'm telling you because he said he gonna come like a thief in the night. And I love you so much. I don't want you caught on the wrong side. So come on. Let's talk. See, when you believe it, if you believe something, you warn people about it. If, it's, if you really believe it, if you believe he coming, come on, why do we have to see it before we start warning? Don't we know the truth? Every letter, read it for yourself. Well, I won't say every. Many letters of the epistles, they talk about his coming. In their introduction, they say, he's coming. We wait, we anticipate the coming of the Lord. They talk, they don't, they don't write letters without talking about him coming. Why? Because they believed it. See, I want you to know he coming. So when the enemy start want you to play, say, no, I ain't playing. Well, I done heard the apostle talk about too many times he coming, and I ain't about to get caught on the wrong side of no tracks. Amen. Can I get an amen? I, 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 uh, uh, no, he, I believe he coming. I believe he coming. And I'm not going to be, I ain't riding over Buki House tonight because he, he, he might come while I'm riding over Buki House. And then <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble. So he coming. Get your breakthrough. Rise up. Go forth. Reveal his glory. Be a witness. A witness of what? Of the Son of God. Let them know he's coming. I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him to come. And I'll be about his business because I believe he's coming. Amen. He's coming. And I know we got stuck. We, we, uh, um, I'm closing the Bible because I'm not going to Father. Because I know what God did tonight. I saw him shift it. And I thank God. And everybody, and everything, and I love how, how you use Devon. Everyone he named was to get the children of Israel in position. Everything God did was for his people. He never did anything for the single person. Everything he did for a person was for that person to be in position to help his people. So, hear me. Denounce that false gospel. You, from the back to the front, young ladies and young men, understand this. You were designed for purpose. Your life, you are not insignificant. <laughs> you so valuable that money and silver and gold couldn't purchase you. Silver and gold. Here, that's, why you, that's why when you run, when them brothers start shooting that game, about you can't afford this. Stop playing. Stop playing. Unless you're ready to bleed out, stop playing. Because that's the truth. But see, we don't got our mind off the we, we don't got our mind off the gospel. 
But I, I love how God has taken us back. He taken us back. He said, I'm about to sing you. Reveal my glory. Let him know. Start opening your mouth. Tell him, say, Jesus, come in. At your job. You know, I don't, I don't, don't get crazy. Now. Don't, be, don't go on your job. He, you know, you're a bank teller talking about it. But Jesus, come in. Because you're going to be unemployed in a moment. You know what I'm saying? But I promise you, watch this. If you have a heart to do it, he'll create a situation. You will be in the lunchroom and you'll, he'll create a situation. You will be, it, I promise you, he'll create a situation. Because why? Because he know that there's somebody need to know he coming. He'll create a situation. And some of y'all, he's going to create situations and they're going to tell you to be quiet or they're going to throw you in prison. And then you're going to say, I can't be quiet because they threw him in prison. And then when they let him out, they went right back to the corner and started speaking again. I got to speak the truth. You know, they're they, they going to be amazed when they see beautiful young ladies like yourself and beautiful young, standing on corners talking about Jesus coming. I'm like, because they, they see these little old, they see, oh man, how many of y'all ever see the little old Haitian ladies or people like that? They got the same, everybody, everybody looking like, I love the people, y'all don't understand, I love them, because I'm like, look at them soldiers, man, oh, them cats, the lady barely can hold a sign, and she walking around with the sign, Jesus coming, and know what God is saying, I need to, I need to pass this baton on. Man on 62nd for years, Jesus coming. God said, that's the, he said, I'm about to mess them up because I'm going to put some people out there that look like they're supposed to be, I mean, in offices and people look like they on, on, on fashion fair and people looking like they are, people looking like they are just like they came off, I mean, executives and company out there talking about, they're like, what, how could she, look at how she look, is she out there, she, I don't know, is she crazy, she look, I mean, she looks so, but she looks so together. He look, how that brother out there, I just saw that brother running, a, that brother got a company on, on it, and this cat making me, what is he doing on the street talking about, what's wrong with these people? Shouldn't they be trying to get to Hollywood? Shouldn't they be trying to, in the race for the world, how could they be out there jeopardizing, looking crazy, talking for, looking, looking crazy for Jesus? Wait a minute, she a nurse. Man, she a doctor. This brother out there, they talking about Jesus coming. Then you go in, you know how God has set it up too. You know how you out there. And then you go in, you have a patient. <laughs> Did I see you on the corner talking about Jesus coming? <laughs> you all right? <laughs> He'll set you up. He'll set you up. You know how I know? Because <laughs> I've been, because they be like, when we was, used to go in the classroom, I used to go to class, people like, don't y'all be out there and talking about Jesus coming? <laughs> they, like, they look at me like I'm crazy. You in the classroom talking about abstinence, but you be out there with a son talking about, he's strange, you know what I'm saying? He's strange. But no, what I showed him is that I ain't got no shame. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Y'all think I'm joking. Man, we had the, we had the CEO, the executive come. Every day after work, we would be on the corner with her. She got the horn bigger than anybody else talking about Jesus. I know he was like, they, but they probably didn't know her. They were like, this, she out there talking about Jesus coming. We, on the, we in the worst hood. We in the, we in the hood of the hood. I ain't lying. Y'all be talking about the hood. That hood. What, what that place was? I, don't, I hope ain't nobody here for Parime. Please don't put this on the tape. <laughs> this area is a prime. It's the hood of the hood. I ain't lying. And we on the corner, people peeing on the peeing on the corner. People, cut, we we looking out the back. See, people look out the back window, and they seeing they seeing uh, land canvases of trees. We looking out the back window. Somebody getting cut. We like <laughs> call it nine one one. I ain't going out there. You know what I'm saying? And yet, we on the corner with a blow horn. Talk about Jesus coming. God said, no, nah, uh-uh. He said, go forth and reveal my glory. Wherever you go, be ready to let them know 
Jesus coming. Hear me, sons and daughters of God. Wherever you go, look for an opportunity to let somebody know that Jesus is coming. Amen? But first, come on, but first do it in your house. You out in that street and you ain't even told your mama Jesus is coming and she's she, she getting turned up. You know what I'm saying? Mama getting turned up like, mama, <laughs> you might want to stop that. Jesus is coming. You're afraid to get cursed. You curse me out, but mama, Jesus is coming. I want us, listen, hear me. You want me to say Sunday? Man, blow it up on Facebook. Blow it up on Twitter. Blow it up on whatever media it is. Jesus is coming. Y'all need to know Jesus is coming. At your workplace, doing lunch, whisper, girl, you know what? What? We was talking about last night. Jesus is coming. For real? Yeah, for real. What you think I should do? Girl, you better get saved. <laughs> you better get saved. Because watch this. I want y'all to get this. If we stop talking about Jesus coming, you know what Satan did? He stopped talking about people Jesus coming. When you stop talking about Jesus coming, guess what happens? People see no urgency to accept God. That was a trick. He started talking about everything else other than Jesus coming. And now people don't see no urgency. Come on. If you're outside your house and your mama told you to stay in the house, you don't have no urgency to go in the house unless somebody told you mama's coming. You be out there playing baseball. Hey, what? Your mama coming. You know why? Because you don't want to get caught out of position. Jesus told his kingdom, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. Don't get caught out of position. Amen? You better call your girlfriend. Girl, Jesus coming. You better call your homeboy. You ain't got it. You ain't, I, I never knew what to say before. He done gave you your punchline. Jesus coming. You tripping. <laughs> no, you're going to be the one tripping if you don't get in the house sometime. Jesus coming. Because that's, is God's glory manifested in his word? When God's, glo glo God's glory is revealed when he speaks a word, right? So what's the last thing that Jesus is going to do? What's the biggest glory that God has? If, what is the biggest glory that God has for us? Him coming. That's what he said. When he come, if the if he talked about glory in the dying of in the dying of our being us being saved, the next biggest glory is when he come. Am I right or wrong? So when we go forth and we reveal his glory, we let people know, oh, he coming. He coming. He coming. And I don't know about you. I don't want to see nobody left behind. Amen. Come on, God is good. If there's anybody in the house that has never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he coming. Come on, get in position. Get in position. Because there's one mandatory thing that you must have when he come. There is one mandatory thing that you must have when he come to go with him. You must have his, you must have his spirit. For he says that you have.